Hello, everyone. You're very welcome to another edition of the JMAC podcast. I am John Mann, and today I am joined by, again, former Wexford footballer Matty Ford and former Tyrone footballer Conor Gormley. You're very welcome, lads. How are you getting on? Yeah, all good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good, John. Cheers. Good to be on again. Happy days. Happy days. So, a bit of business to take uh, care of today, boys. Um, it always draws up a bit of debate, the uh, All-Stars for 2020. And I suppose the team was named um, last night. And there, there's three cavalmen, nine double men, one temporary man, and two male. So, without any further ado, I'll, I'll name the start from 15. So, in goals was Ray Galligan, number two, Oshin Mullen, number three, Cork Faulkner, number four, Mick Fitzsimons, number five, James McCarthy. Number six, John Small. Number seven, Owen Merchant. Number eight, Tomas Galligan. Nine, Brian Fenton. Ten, Niall Sc- Nine, Scully. Eleven, Kieran Kenny. Number 12, Conor Gallen. Number 13, Killian O'Connor. Number 14, uh, Conor Sweeney. And completing the All-Stars for 2020 was number 15, Dean Rock. No surprise there. I suppose, <sighs> touching on all that, um, Conor, what's the verdict? Is there anyone in the outer? Are you kind of happy enough with that starting 15? I suppose it's, it's hard to argue with it. Um, if it was the only man that sort of stood out for me or missed out maybe would be Paddy Durkin from, from Mayo. He could maybe slot in that half-back lane. He's been a real leader for Mayo over his last number of years and he'd be sort of the one maybe that I thought maybe would end with a, a big big shout maybe. Maybe instead of maybe Owen Merchant maybe, you know, but that would be the only sort of contentious one I would have maybe, maybe thought of. Both all interesting thing I looked at there. I think there was... I think it was eight first team first all star winners, which was good was good to see as well, you know, they're not all dominated by the same players all the time. So eight first time winners was another thing that jumped out at me there, so it was so maybe Polly Durkin would be the one for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's the that's the general consensus. Now, what are you what's the verdict from you, Matty? What are you thinking? You're probably looking at the forwards. Are you happy with the full forward line or what's your general consensus? Yeah, just um, as regards to forwards, just looking through the, the, the list of nominations, you couldn't really have too many. There's, there's like, there's nobody certainly jumping out. And I 100% agree with Connor regarding Paddy Dorkin. I think he's been exceptionally, um, um, you know, consistent over the last three or four years, and probably a little bit. But forwards wise, I, I don't really think so. I know they've picked Thomas Galligan out of the forwards. Um, and into midfield, look, that's something that that happens regularly anyway. But just looking kind of down through the list of forwards, um, very hard to, very hard to disagree with any of the six that's there. And to be honest, I think very hard to make a case, you know, for anybody that hasn't got in. Um, you know, there's certainly nobody there jumping out. Um, you know, it's very strange not to see, I suppose, you know, either you know Donny Gall, probably Tyrone or Kerry player at yeah. all mm-hmm. in the fifteen, which you know is kind of not the norm over the last. But I think, look, that was the, that was the nature of the championship. It was kind of a, a sprint as opposed to a marathon this year. Um, I think maybe one other fella just at the back that might have been a little bit unlucky, I think, was Padder Morgan. Um, I think he'd been excellent up to the Ulster final. And I think, you know, yeah. in no, normal circumstances, um, you know, had to be in a back door in a couple more games. I think, um, you know, he was he was shaping up nicely. But it's very, look, at obviously the, the Stephen Cluxton, I'm sure we're going to come on to that one. Um, Stephen Cluxton, one again, is going to cause... Um, a bit of debate, um, you know. I don't, I don't see any need for arguments or anything like that over. But look, that's what the All Stars are about. They're, they're a debate every year. And as, you know, yeah. I think we said just before we came on air, you know, if, if five hundred people pick the team, there's probably no two pe- people who pick the same one. So look at it. it's, that's the that's the nature of All Stars. Yeah, definitely. I suppose it's probably I'm wearing my cap and hat, and I probably had a lot of debate on Twitter yesterday with a with a lot of gentlemen about it. But I can't really like you look at Ray Gallagher. I think he has to get the nod this year, really, because like I did say, he made a lot of um, important saves. He kicked the winner point against Monaghan, do or die stuff, and. At the end of the day, I think someone said he had a bad game against Dublin. Everyone really has a bad game against Dublin. Yeah. You know, how you can't how can you beat them <laughs> these days? So yeah. I think I think Connor Mortimer was making that point. But Connor, would you what what would be your opinion of maybe the goalie slot there? Would you be happy with Gallagher or or is there a case for Cluxton? Uh well as we've seen this last number of years, uh, the role the goalkeeper plays within a in a team and a, and the patterns of play and stuff is massive now and Cluxton has set the standard for that, but you have to give credit to Raymond Gallagher. He, he's what he's done the year for for Gavin. Really, he's the captain. He's the leader for them. He really upped ante for them and really set a good platform platform for them. I I thought and definitely his performance of the year. I think it merited uh, a, an all star and his first all star at that. So great, great for him. Great for Gavin. Great for the, the his club and his, and his cousin as well to be to join them. So I think well deserved. 
as we said earlier, anybody could pick Cluxton in any, in any team. So, but no, I'll give it to Raymond Galligan for his, uh, his point against Monaghan, as you say, do or day, was set the tone for what Calvin were about for the rest of the year. I know the disappointing finish to the year against Dublin, but uh, yeah. I would definitely give it to him. I would. I know Cluxton probably won a lot and a lot of yeah. All-Stars and all the rest, but I suppose it's just nice to see somebody new and fresh in there and I think well-deserved for Raymond. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I suppose we can, we can pick through them, lads. Um, Oshin Mullen for Mayo. God, boys, he had a fantastic, a fantastic year, really. What was your opinion on Oshin, uh, Matty? Obviously, you, I wouldn't say you would have liked to come up against him if you are still saying. <laughs> no, um, absolutely not. And I think just going back to, to, to Cluxon for a minute, I think like he's probably a victim of two things. One, yeah. Dublin's dominance. Um, the fact that he gets an armchair ride through Leinster and you know, he just is not put under any pressure. And secondly, probably of the level that he's brought other goalkeepers up to with his work ethic and, you know, where he's took the game to. And a lot of other guys, you know, Niall Morgan, Rory Began, all these lads, they're following on what Stephen Cluxton is doing. So, you know, he's probably a little bit of a victim of that. But like Connor says, I don't think anyone is going to be grudge. Um, Galligan, he's, he's all-star this year. He was exceptional. Um, no, look, Lushin Mullin, I'd say, is an absolute nightmare to mark. Um, you know, to speed him. Just the first couple of games I've seen him play in the National League this year, you know, the very second the ball was turned over, he was gone. And oh. I think most fellas that played in the forwards will tell you a cornerback like that is not uh, not exactly what you want to be marking any time of the year, never mind during the muck and the slop in the National League. But look, he's really, really good. He's able to do his defensive stuff really well. But, um, you know, he's able to be a, a help to, to Mayo getting forward as well. And, you know, I think I don't think this is going to be his 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 last All-Star. Yeah, I suppose I can cover, cover uh, Park Faulkner. Pork had a really good club championship. I don't know if he's seen the county final at RTE yeah. that time. He's just, he's Mr. Reliable. He's quick. He gets up the pitch. He scores. So I think he probably does deserve a fullback bear. Um, he was just so reliable. Yeah, you put, we, we put him on the main man against every opposition team every time. And he'd done a fantastic job. Great blocks in the Ulster final. Connor, you'd appreciate it as well. But uh, no, he definitely deserves it, I think, Pork. And he's uh, he's a great role model, I think. And yeah, he, he definitely deserves the fullback spot. And Suppose number four, Mick Fitzsimons, uh, Connor, he's been branded as probably the best full back in the game at the minute. Would you be off that opinion or what compared to that? Uh, hi, probably as a, as a man marker again, he's probably been the, the go to man for, for Dublin and that full back line as, as well this last year, too. Like his performance level has just consistently has been, been brilliant. And again, he do, everything he does is without fuss and again can join the attack and set up attacks and, and, and link that way as well. But just missing Mr. Consistency with that Dublin team at the minute and one of the first defenders you'd always want in your team like that without a doubt and I don't know I'd lo- love to be playing along with him he can read the game very well you know if yeah. you're playing a full back he can sweep and cover in very well and read the danger very well which a, a good cornerback is always about like so definitely as the like rest of them I think he's well deserving of his all-star a third one as well so he's he's going well and a vital cog in that Dublin machine at the back yeah, he's absolutely fine. And we can push on to the half-back line. James McCarthy, Matty, uh, he's, I think he's very underrated. A lot of the Dublin boys rate him as probably one of the best ever. How high like how, 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 how high up is he in your bracket, Matty? And um, does he deserve, he obviously deserves the half-back number five jersey. Yeah, look, he probably could have won one in any one of the half-back line midfield, maybe even into a half-hour position, to be honest. Um, he's that good. I, like, in terms of, I, I'd put him right up there with, like, he, he's probably, by the time he's finished, he could be, he'll be in the conversation, being one of the, one of the very best. And I think he is actually over, underrated and overlooked a small bit, but um, he's just so consistent, you know, whether he plays in the half back lane or plays in midfield, he's just up and down. He does, he just does the simple things right all the time. Um, said, unbelievably consistent. He doesn't miss games. He doesn't seem to pick up injuries. Um, yeah. And, you know, he's he's the ultimate team player. Um, you know, Connor mentioned about, like to play along with, with Mick Fitzsimons, I think James McCarthy is certainly another one of those guys. Like, you know, just the, the, the first attack in the All Ireland final, you know, he was probably within his rights to go for goal, but he lays it on a plate for Dean Rock. And, you know, he's doing that for years. Um, he's super, super consistent. And I said he, he could have picked up an All Star in any one of five positions there, really, across the half back line or midfield. Yeah, definitely. I'll cover John Small. Uh, John Small, he knows he knows how to mix it. He's rough and ready. He probably gets, he, he's a lad you'd love to have on your team, not against him. I think he was, he had a fantastic year. I think it's overdue as well. A lot of people are saying, is this his first All-Star lads as well, I think. Um, yeah, it is, yeah. From that point of view, he deserves it. Uh, the tough year, I think, is, is his dad would have passed away last year as well. So th- I think this is like the cherry and uh, the, the dice and the cake for him. But uh, he had a great year. He's very solid. And he's just a lad you'd love to have alongside you, essentially. Um, Owen Merchant, Matty, 
an absolute speed mer- speed merchant, and he looks about ten years of age. Uh, so him up. Yeah, um, that was the first. That was definitely the first thing I would have thought when I seen him maybe a couple of years back playing. I said like. Jesus, this lad has been slipped in from the under-12 team or something. But, uh, you know, he's not there for nothing. When you look at the, the players that Dublin had well, sitting on the bench over the last couple of years, and Bertram was one of the guys who was consistently starting and consistently playing well. Obviously, was was excellent in last year's replay. Um, you know, he he probably absolutely deserves it. As Connor said earlier on, you know, it's, it's the one place maybe where, you know, I don't think anyone would have had too many gripes had Paddy Dorkin been, been in there mm-hmm. instead of him. But, um, you know, over a period of time, a couple of years at this stage, two, three years, um, I don't think anyone would would disagree with his inclusion. Um, you know he can score, as well as doing his his uh, his defensive duties really really well. And you know he's he's always an option to to join the attack. And you know I said as Connor was saying about Fitzsimons, you know he he's you know for a guy with I suppose we would say little experience, but you know, only playing a couple of years. Um, you know he's excellent at what he does around the half back line and kind of he's, he's there's no fuss about it. And he just gets on. I think he's I think he's he's going to be excellent. I said he's going to have a couple more all stars to come as well. Yeah, definitely. So was moving on to midfield, we've Tomas Gallagher from Cav, and um, you you obviously would have been watching Ulster very closely, Connor. Um, yeah. I suppose describe what Thomas was like over the, uh, over the Threads Championship. Um, I had, he had a phenomenal championship. Um, just a real die-hard player that I sort of seemed, you know, just would never give in. We've seen a few clips from chasing back men, and no, no call to maybe. Just it was a real workhorse, a real warrior. You know, he could fetch ball right in the middle of the field or inside and full forward line. He was very dangerous as well. So. Just one of them players that you would love in your team that you know you're going to war. Thomas will be with you and you have your back and no matter what happens. And a deserving first, first all-star for him. He was a leader for that Calvin team as well. Uh, around midfield or even the full forward line. You've seen him tracking back too in the all the final as well. Tracking back and working hard as well and putting in the tackle. So a real sort of a, a workhorse around there and one of the players that you would love to be. Love, love to have in your team. You know, there's just no maybe no airs or graces about him. You know, he just works hard for the team and does a job for the team and you know, just uh, along with Fenton there, he's a, just a, Fenton does the, the stylish work and Thomas will do the, do the hard, dirty work for him and you need boys like that in your team if you're going to win championships and especially also championships, you need boys to get down and dirty for you and Thomas is one of them and uh, f- fair play to him, he's, he's been exceptional in the year and deserves it. Yeah, Jesus, it's mad. It would have been in the same year at school as me and Calvin here and he was just, even in first year, he could have probably done a job with the senior team. He's just uh, yeah. an absolute tremendous man. He's, he's, he's he, he deserves it so much. He, I know how much work he's put into it. I do uh, Brian Fenton. I suppose Fenton, what can we say, lads? Complete footballer, probably the best footballer of current crop at the minute. <sighs> like, look at what the five all stars now. You can't fault him. Like, like I, I remarked on him. I think he kicked uh, wide against Dublin and it just looked like he's seen a ghost. One little mistake. <laughs> um, just a six stick man. And look, he's probably in line for another all star, another, another five or six or two if he keeps himself right, which I don't doubt he will. Um, moving on to the half forward line, Matty Niall Scully. Um, I'd say underrated and kind of goes about his work very quietly. Yeah, absolutely. You know, covers huge ground. He's not afraid to get back and, and do his defensive stuff either. Like Connor was saying about Thomas Galligan, you need you know you need fellas. Every every team needs a Niall, a Niall Scully. You know, Connor's great team. The likes of you know, Jared Cavlin or. You know, do her or even Brian her, McGuigan yeah. or lads, guys like that. You know, you need guys. It's just it, it's the it's the probably the stuff that not many lads find too um, popular or sexy to be doing on a football field. But Niles Gully does it really, really well. You know, he's also a huge scoring threat. I think which is kind of o- overlooked a bit. But um, right. you know, he's the one constant probably in that forward line along with Kilkenny um, over the last four or five years where. With Jim Gavin's last probably four years, and now again with Desi, he seems to be the one guy that starts every day. And I think in a team that can rotate players and not really, you know, lose anything, he's the one fella that's been there constantly. Um, you know, he's been excellent, really, really good. And you know, there's I think there's a few more years to come from him as well. Yeah, Jason, without a shadow of a doubt. Kieran Kenny Connor, um, she's an unbelievable footballer as well. She's these double yeah. boys, like <laughs> Mr. Dependable up and down the pitch. Another man that can't really do anything wrong either. I think he scored against Zamba soccer side goal against Leash in the Leinster Championship as well. Connor <laughs> um, definitely deserves deserves that number eleven jersey. Oh, without a doubt. I think I think him and like so him and Brian Fenton are just two Rolls Royce uh, footballers, like you know, and to, to both of them come along at the same time for Dublin is just helps their cause that wee bit easier, you know, to to have one stuff, you know, but. The orchestra of the Dublin machine, I think, you know, a lot of stuff goes through him, even just maybe simple wee hand pass and stuff, but he seems to always be on the ball. He sort of reminded me a lot of, of Brian McGuigan, the played for us. Like, he just was always there, always available, always kept the thing 
ticking on. Again, could be a threat inside as well. You know, he's played in full forward a couple of times and, and can win his own ball and, and can be a scoring threat, which is which is massive and a forward. That's sort of versatility. From a defender point of view, is he going to play in the half forward line? Do you follow him in the full forward line? You know, he's causing you endless endless headaches and just won his fourth All Star. Like in this, like somebody said there, that these boys can can go on to win five, six. You know, there's never ending what they could what they could do. You know, but you look at that half forward line of Neil Scully, Kilkenny, and and Con, one of Con, and Long's uh, along with Jim McCarthy, one of my favourite players. You know, so just an amazing half forward line, and they're going to be. Going to be there there for another number of years, unfortunately, for, for us and high up in Tyrone here. Yeah, Jesus. And uh, competing, as you were saying there, Conor Callaghan, King Con, is King Con, as the Dublin boys call him. Um, I don't know, look, at, I'm still waiting on DNA results for him to come back as a human. Some of the stuff he does, <laughs> I think it was against what's common. I'll never forget that point he scored, landing on his feet, looked like he broke his ankle, got That's up. That's right. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, great, great year again, all action, uh, very reliable player. And, what more can you say, boys? Number 12, Conor Callan competing the half forward line. Um, probably the, it's ideal, Matty, that you land him, Killian O'Connor. Um, yeah, number 13, what, what do you think? What's the fair to that? Um, just actually, when you're chatting there about the half forward line, like, it's probably the first year that I can remember that there won't be much of a discussion about who missed out in the forwards, no. um, such as was the quality of the six of these fellas. Um, you know, as I said, looking through the list of who who didn't get in there a couple of minutes ago, there's nobody you could really make a really strong case for. So, but look at the six of these lads were, were exceptional, and like Killian O'Connor's record over the last ten years, like it's just it's ridiculous to be honest. Um, you know, everyone says oh they get a lot of soft games and Connacht and stuff like that. You still like score free still have to be scored. You still have to score from play. But like in fairness, he's doing it against the top teams and has been consistently. He yeah. seems to be about thirty seven years of age. Um, he's been around that long, but. You know, like, and there's a couple more years left in him as well. I think he was young footballer of the year twice as well, wasn't he? Um, yeah, you know, absolutely been, yeah. phenomenal, phenomenal player. 45s, frees, you know, people kind of, I suppose, not well, criticise him a small bit that he didn't score much from play, but certainly over the last three or four years, I think he's really rectified that in style. Um, and again, it's probably not his, not going to be his, his last All Star either, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. And even moving on to that, we've uh, Connor Sweeney. Um, Probably a man you would have enjoyed marking maybe over the years if, if you're still playing Connor. Um, what's better than Connor Sweeney, number 14? I don't know if I enjoyed marking him or not, but like <laughs> Matty there, I've been, I've been chasing right after Matty all day. Like, so. But Connor won his first uh, All Star, which was good for, for temporary football, good for the top off the year that they had. Um, you seen his point of outside on the sideline, outside of the boot, last minute of the game, stuck it over the bar to get through. You know, just an amazing left foot he has. He can. Yeah. You no, know, but like Killian O'Connor is scoring he'd be high scoring rate, which is which is what's what's needed nowadays. You want to compete, you want a top scoring forward. We like some Michael Quinlan along with him there, the twin scoring set in, in Tipperary, you know, and it's good to see Tipperary or new counties always coming up and, and pushing the guard and changing the guard a wee bit if you want to say, and, and it's good for them to win to win Munster this year and, and it'll top it off nicely for Connor being captain and won his first all stars. So it's a good year for him and Again, a top forward that's going to be about for now a year or two as well. Like, so definitely one to, one to watch out for and hopefully he could repeat the feat over the next couple of years, maybe get another All-Star again, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose completing the lineup for the All-Star 2020 was Dean Rock. No surprise, boys. Doesn't miss a free, very accurate. And he chipped in a couple of goals, got the goal first minute in the All-Ireland final as well. So seriously impressive. And uh, sure, again, another double boy. What, what more can you say? Um, just an incredible... Incredible uh, feat, and uh, Dean Rock repeats the All Star lineup for 2020. Um, I suppose there's conversation, and uh, I suppose nitpicking a bits and pieces. But Matty, is nine for Dublin? Is nine players of the All Stars from Dublin? Is that enough, or did they deserve more, or is that just people clutching at straws? Uh, personally, I think it's about right um, for this year. Um, like you know, the only ones that missed out from the list at the back is Robbie McDade, and you know he was uh, and Davy Byrne, sorry, and. You know, the pile were really consistent this year. You know, would you put him in ahead of James McCarthy, Owen Merchant, Oshie Mullin? I don't think you would. Um, I think the numbers about Ray said the only one for me that's a little bit contentious and look at I certainly have no problem would have been there is Owen Merchant. Um, said Paddy Durkin is is more than deserving of a place there as well. Um, up front, I don't think you could have too many, too many um complaints. Um, you know, uh, Sean Bugler, I think is the only other one from Dublin that mm. was. That was uh, nominated up there. 
look, you, I don't think you could really have, have too many complaints. He was taken off in a couple of games. Wasn't playing particularly bad, but again, would you put him in ahead of anyone that's there? I don't think you would. Um, you know, I think overall, I think eight or nine is about right. And it's probably just both relevant of Dublin's dom- complete dominance at the moment. Um, you know, you've heard people saying, you know, they should have 15 All-Stars and things like that. But I think, I'd be hoping that's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. But I think for the year to say it, I think that, that nine is probably about right. Yeah, well, what's the verdict yeah. from you, Connor? What do you think? And Urs, oh. would you be off the same opinion as Matty? No, it'll be the same opinion, Matty. I think nine's probably, probably in around right. You know, they're just they're that don- dominant of a team. Like, it's just, just hard to, you know, you couldn't give them any less, I don't think. You know, it would have been a bit of injustice they got any less. And it was just like straight for Cavan to get three three All-Stars, yeah. which has jumped out of me. I think there's only two before that. Is that correct, maybe? So one, to, one, one maybe for and I so to have three now in one team is, is massive for them, you know. So it's good to see that, and you know, sprinkling all the ones like oh, a few other boys getting their first one, Ashin Mullen and Connor Sweeney that getting their first ones, it's, it's great to see, like as well, you know. So I think I agree with what uh, with Matty said. Definitely happy enough for nine, and great to see them the other boys picking up ones as well. Yeah, I suppose the All Stars every year, year in, year out, they always draw up so much debate, Matty, and everyone's always giving out about it. And, you know, what kind of, at the end of the day, they have to be picked and there's always going to be debate, but, like, would you like to see any changes to the Matty, or, like, you know, at the end of the day, I know you, you've won one yourself, bits and pieces, but what would, you, would there be any changes you'd kind of make to us, or, like, you, you happy enough the way it's been picked, or? Um, it's something, I suppose, I think they, they, they done it years ago when there was two separate ones with the GPA, I think maybe, like, the players possibly have some say. Um, at the end of the day, you know, the players themselves are playing with and against these fellas, and I think, you know, while there's a savvy rivalry with players while they're playing, once you leave the field, I think lads are smart enough to know, geez, that lad is a hell of a good footballer or whatever. And I think <laughs> um, when players picked the, the GPA All-Stars themselves, as regards they were voting for themselves, I think they got it pretty right most of the time. And I'm not saying there's, like, as I said, I would have no qualms with this, but to be honest, I, I, I just think maybe the, possibly the players have some small bit of an input into it. Um, I don't know if anybody at... I'd have a, have a huge issue with that, but you know, players, in fairness, will will generally go for the for the fellow today. Absolutely, think is best. And I said, I'm not I'm not saying journalists don't do that, but lads, I think have different uh, players will have different opinions or a different perspective on, on different players having played with them and against them um, over a period of time. And um, it's just it's just something I'd like to see. It's not you know I I don't have an issue with it. I never had the one thing that I suppose does maybe annoy me a small bit. about and again, look, it's only I said it's only nitpicking as the. You know, Players been picked completely out of position. You know, if you're a half hour picking the full far line, that's fine. But yeah. It's just you know doing you know p- p- the picking defenders at the in forwards or positions or vice versa. You know, is is a little bit of a bugbear in mind. But again, look at it, it's it's not something I have a, a major issue with to be honest. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Connor, you won you won three of them, so you're you're well used to receiving them. I suppose <laughs> when you when you were playing, like I suppose I suppose the same question to you, Connor. Like, would you like to see any kind of changes, or are you kind of happy enough with the way the format is? Um, maybe changes. A lot of it can depend on. I know it's an exceptional year last year the way things went, but a lot of it can depend on maybe how you play. Maybe in two games, if you play in the Ireland final and the Ireland semi final, if you had two great games there, you possibly get an All Star. So maybe taking into consideration National League and maybe more of the provincial championships. Uh, if you went down the Hurling route, you know the Hurling have tiered different tier championships. Would you go into the, of maybe tiered All Stars? Something like that maybe could be an option, you know, the so-called maybe weaker counties are, are maybe missing out. They aren't they getting the, the limelight you've seen with nine dubs in and they're going to be there thereabouts for the next number of years. They're always going to be an all-star team. So what about the smaller counties, the smaller teams? Is there something that could be introduced or we wee bit of incentive for them maybe in an all-star trip? Maybe a second team that them two teams then go away and play each other as well, you know, like the two years go away. And play yeah. each other, maybe. Would you give a, a lower tier, the maybe Division Threes and Division Four teams, an All Star, an All Star yeah. team to go in and play that that team there, for example, maybe something like that could be. Uh, I'm just thinking off the, the top of my head, someone more incentive for the for the smaller counties, maybe if you want to say, or the teams in Division Three and Four. Yeah, I suppose there's a bit of debate, Matty, about maybe Kerry or sorry, not even uh, David Cliff from Kerry getting a nomination, and I know Cork bet them in the championship, but you know, there's that kind of to a certain extent, make a bit of a bluff job out of it because they maybe the ones more were Cavan as their Dublin lads probably deserve the nomination. David Cliff for getting nominated, Matty, what was the verdict from that? Or you know, I look at David Clifford as one of my is probably is my favourite footballer playing football at the moment. Um, but I thought it was really strange to be honest. Um, but look, <clears> just looking through the list, like 
genuinely actually kind of looked like they were almost trying to make up the numbers. And I don't mean that in a bad way against anyone that's picked, like, because there was such a little, there was so little time for players to impress. Like, I think uh, Kerry's championship was, I think, Claire and Cork. I think that was it in yeah. two, two, in, in two really bad, two really bad evenings. Um, like, as Connor is saying, if they're going to take into, into account National League form, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, on championship form, I'm sure David Clifford would have been as surprised as anyone to be in there. But look, I said, there's a couple more and it is an exception. It was an exceptional year and hopefully we don't have another one like it again. But um, I think this year it was kind of a matter of, of filling, I think really filling positions in nominations. I said, I, don't, I hope that's not being harsh on anyone because just looking through the list, like there's there's some guys that certainly wouldn't jump out at you to say, well, you know, they, they had a shout of being in the All-Star team because you know, I, just, I just don't think that's the case this year. Yeah, I suppose the big thing is like the ones who take it in, like obviously uh, Cavan and Tipperary and bits and pieces. Connor, is it so probably imperative and important that you know the likes of Connor Sweeney, Paul Faulkner, Ray Galligan, and uh, Klaus Galligan? Like it, it is it, like at the end of the day, it is very important that we do try maybe get another few and even have another good year this year or the following year or whatever. I oh, definitely is. You don't want to be sort of hit them with like maybe one hit wonder or whatever. You want to keep these boys up here, these teams up here as much as you can and I suppose that's the, they know the standard now that requires now to, to, to get to all-star teams and it's up to them boys now to keep pushing on and, and, and trying to achieve as much as you can and maybe at the, at the start of the year you don't set out I'm going to win an all-star but it was a, a, a great bonus to have at the end of the year but as yeah. to keep as much going as you can and try and keep playing as well as you can and keep boost your, your your position in the team first of all and then push the, the county on as high as high standards they can get to and that's uh you just seen how much it meant to Park Fortner yesterday. I think it was a wee clip of seen clip of a video of him there. So he was really excited. It just shows you how much that it means to the people like him, you know, and it's great to see boys like that winning their first All Star and it's yeah. it just it was an exceptional year and it's just it's just a nice nice bonus for them as well to get it now. Yeah. Like I'm kinda of looking at the full back line and half back line here, Matty, and I'm kinda of thinking they're very, they're all very quick players, um, and like uh, maybe Mick Fitzsimons might be the um, exception there. But uh, you know, I suppose when Connor was playing the kind of the full back role, half back line role, like has the kind of we have remarked on it, has the kind of the half back line, full back role kind of changed? Like you, you really do need to be supporting and scoring points uh, to be helping your team these days. Yeah, it has. Like there's looking through those guys, there's very few of those guys who will sit back and and play in their in their position. For, for, for 70 minutes like Oshin Mullen just wants to get forward and wants to get on the ball and, and affect something going forward I think that's why a lot of the top teams now are the top teams because they're able to do that um, and the players have to have the capabilities of doing that like you know look at the like the the uh, Tyrone defenders the Kerry defenders any of the top teams particularly the Division 1 teams and look at we're looking at we're looking at uh, what 14 um, all-stars that are in that will play in Division 1 next year I think so mm-hmm. like that's why they're there as well. You know, they, are, they are the best players in the country. But I think you have to be able to adapt. I think the day of a guy just sitting at the edge of the square, a guy standing at cornerback all day, I think that, that day is starting to pretty much go out the window. You know? And Dublin, in fairness to them, um, have brought it to a new level where you know, every one of them are comfortable on the ball, every one of them are comfortable kicking. And you know, if, the, if the occasion rises, most of them are, are comfortable enough at kicking a score as well. Um, and I think that's look at that's the way it's going. I said the day of the, the fellow just standing in there to, to kind of to dog a, a corner forward or a full forward. I think that's that's more or less gone. Um, you know, you have to be able to, to be able to do a bit of everything now, and I think we're we're seeing more and more of that. You know, every year. Yeah, yeah I think that. I think on that point too, just John about them boys joining joining the attack. But when the day job has to be done back at defence, they're there too. They just don't go forward and say. That's my job done. I've joined the tack and set up a score. They're back helping out as well, you know. So they're constantly up and down the pitch, which is which is great to see from a defender's point of view. Or if I yeah. was cornerback, Mike Foot Simons and Owen Merchants, I see Owen Merchant way up the field. I don't have to give out to him because I know the next five seconds later he's back down helping me out, which I think mm-hmm. sets Dublin apart from from a lot of teams. They don't leave the, the house open, if you want to say. They attack all together, but they defend all together, which is just they're a wee bit ahead of everybody at it. Everybody else that at that at the minute I think that's what sets them apart. You know that attack and defend mentality as, as a whole team is just ha- really hard to break down, and I just I think that's a wee bit different in them at the minute. Yeah, and I, like we can't really. Like, I know I, I it was my turn to pick on Fenton, but uh, you know Brian Fenton Connor, he just stands out every single game. He's probably the most consistent footballer I've seen. How impressed are you by him, Connor? Ah, uh, high, unbelievable, and, uh, and his championship record is unbelievable too. Like not to have lost a championship, championship game in so six seasons now is like so. 
that's, that's scary. Like, you know, to go through six seasons and not getting beaten in the championship, unbelievable. But I uh, just a Rolls Royce, you just love watching him play. And the way he can affect the game, I think, is massive. You know, he just seems to pick his moments to really affect it and, and drive at a team and, and pop one over just as nice as day as he was doing it in the backyard. And, you know, pop a score over is just so effortless for him. And again, one of these boys is just up and down and up and down. And it was him and Kilkenny and likes a con there. Like, they're just a. Uh, they can just link so well together and just they're just a joy to watch sometimes what they can do like and as I said earlier they're back helping out and defending as well which is good he's not just a, a man the fence goes just to go forward and score two or three points this game he's back helping out at the defence linking with the defence and breaking out from there as well like, so he, he can do the dirty work as well so he's just not all about going forward for, but from a defensive point of view or defensive head he, he's very capable of doing that job as well and you see what, what I like about him as well you very very rarely see him uh, Annabelle else having a, a really good game on him, you know, really taking him to the cleaners. He's really just missed their consistency in there and he sets a platform for a lot of good work at Dublin do. Yeah, and I suppose Niall Scully, kind of looking at the half-forward line, uh, Matty, like he's probably just he's just a very important cog in the wheel for Dublin and he d- probably does a lot of work that goes unnoticed. He pulls the strings, really. How impressed are you by Niall Scully, Matty? Yeah, look, we touched on him there briefly coming, coming through the team, but he's, He's just missed a consistent as well. He's up there like with James McCarthy and with Fenton as regards being, being being consistent. And I said the fact that you know he started practically every championship match that he's that he he or since he's he's joined the Dublin squad, I think says it all. When you look at the embarrassment of riches to have up front, like any of those lads can any of the, the probably twelve Dublin players mm-hmm. could play up front at any one time. But he's the one fella, probably along with Kilkenny to be fair, who starts all the time. Um, even like even playing during a lot of national league games. And I think that shows his importance to him. Um, but like every every team needs an Isles Scully. Um, you know what what he does? Like he's just it's unselfish work. It's dirty work. And what Connor is saying about you know Dublin forwards being happy enough to get back and defend, he's certainly one of them as well. Um, you know he'll pick up ball of Stephen Cluxton and start heading up the field with it. And you know the way he hugs both touch line or both sidelines in attack just to create weight and stuff like that. And I said you know he's well capable of scoring as well. He's gone in the end of. Of plenty of goals over the last three or four years. Um, you know, he, he probably is a bit underrated in Dublin, but I suppose that's relative to the, Dublin, the other Dublin players that you're talking about, the likes of Kilkenny and O'Callaghan and Dean Rock. Um, but he's a super, super player. Yeah, and say Connor Sweeney there, um, Connor, I suppose he was the only tip man involved. And there might have been a case for Mickey Quinlivan. Um, I think the, a lot of people are kind of saying that too. Uh, Batman and Robin, they call him. Uh, Connor mm-hmm. Sweeney, Connor. Um, you know, how impressed are you by him? And I suppose that outrageous kick he uh, along the sideline as well. Like, you, I'm presuming you've seen a right lot of him during the championship. Uh, I've seen, I noticed him that he, he's probably stepped up a, a lot now to be the, the leader of that, that, that type of team. He's been, he's been the, been the captain now this year, which was, which was massive for him, but just an exceptional player. We touched him as well before, like he just, that left foot to him. And, you know, from freeze or from play, you know, we can the last day in the semi-final, maybe they were under a lot of pressure. He seemed to be the one that stepped up and pushed, pushed the thing on a bit and got a few scores for them. And I know that it wasn't easy against uh-huh. against Mayo. There were a big deficit, deficit, deficit there against them, but he seen one chipped away at them and got them going again. You know, so that shows you when the things are, are tough that the character he is that he can lead that team from the front. And it's just yeah. it's great to see, and it's great to see him picking up a first All Star and, and again one for Tipperary. And those have been one been too many successful days and. For Tipperary football, they've been maybe living in the shadows of, of the Hurling team for a long number of years there, but great to see them, and they've seen the joy of the, joy of the scenes they had. One of that most of the title was, was was a massive day, and it was great to see it, and, you know, Connor's the, the one there that'll lead Tipperary forward, or Tipperary football forward for the next number of years, I think. Yeah, and so, Matty, who would be your, geez, it's, it's, it's a tough, tough question, I think, and a lot of people's kind of rooting around with it, but who would be your player of the year from that, uh, Matty, I suppose? Um, I think I personally I go for Brian Fenton. Um, I know we've you both talked about him in depth. It's just I think he's just his level of consistency is just phenomenal. I think maybe Barn, I think it was the, the draw on All Ireland against Kerry where he probably wasn't at his usual ridiculous high standard, but he came back into replay and was unbelievable. Um, he very very rarely not even has a a poor game. He rarely even has an average game. He's just his his level of consistency is unbelievable, and he can do everything. You know, he's two footed. You know, he knows the right time to get forward and kick a score. He knows the right time to win a kick out. Um, you know, and he's just he just looks at he looks like he's doing everything kind of at about sixty percent. And I think that's the sign of mm. of really good players. Um, obviously, it's going to be really close. I think between himself and Kilkenny. Um, but I just think for again for consistency over 
you know, six years at this stage and don't have not lost a championship match in six seasons is, is ridiculous. Um, but I think he's been really, really, really good again this year. Um, look at it. I don't think he'd he'd be too upset not winning it. I think it's it's absolutely more about medals, and so it should be. But you know, at the end of a, of a year like that, you know, it's nice, it's nice to pick up either an All Star, pick up Footballer of the Year. But um, you know, it either one of them wouldn't be a surprise. I certainly wouldn't have a problem with either one of them. But for me, I I I go for Brian Fenton. And what about yourself, Connor? Who'd be your Player of the Year? Uh, I totally agree with Marty there. I think it wouldn't be a surprise any of the two got them, Kieran or, or Brian. But it'd have to go with Fenton again, just as we mentioned earlier. That, earlier on the, the Rolls Royce of that Dublin machine and just massive massive player for them and I think without doubt winning football of the year was well within the capabilities of doing it again in the year again so just a massive player and it's a joy just to be watching these type of players you know sitting back and we can watch and enjoy them Was a wee bit like Messi and Ronaldo sort of type thing you know just it's great to sit back and, and watch these boys perform and it was difficult circumstances last year and all the rest and they put their a lot of things on, on hold for us to sit back and, and and watch them, so it's just a joy, and hopefully we'll get the chance to see them later on in the year again. Hopefully yeah. do, doing their thing. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll I think I'll go with Kieran Kenny. I think for player of the year, I think he was him or Fenton really at the end of the day. You wouldn't you wouldn't be surprised if either boys got it, but I think Kieran Kenny probably gets the uh, nod uh, for himself this year. And I suppose to look at look at twenty twenty, um, Matty, what would be what would be, what would have been your moment of the year? And um, like I know a lot of stuff would have happened, but what what stood out for you? Um. I know I'm going against your, your fellow county men, John, but I think Tipperary winning in Munster, um, you know, they're they're really fighting. Um, not I wouldn't say a losing battle down there to be fair, but you know, as Connor touched on there, they're really struggling down there, you know, t- to gain support. Um, obviously they're the they're the second sport in Tipperary, the same as ourselves here in Wexford, to, to, you know, very much so to hurling. Um, but you know, David Power, who we had here in Wexford ourselves, and. Um, you know, who's a proud Tipperary man, won the minor with them in, in 2011. Um, you know, he's gone in and he's got some really good people around him. You know, they like Paddy Christie, obviously, is one of them. But, you know, there's a lot of good football people in Tipperary, no different to anywhere else. But I said, they really are, um, you know, a, a solid number two down there to Harlan. And to see them, you know, beating, beating Cork, um, obviously, you know, people say, well, look, at it didn't beat, they didn't beat Kerry in the final. So, does it count? But look at for them to, to win a monster final after that length of time, you know, is, is unbelievable for them. And you know, look at there's lots of really good stories in the championship this year. Clearly, Kevin, you know, absolutely as well. Um, but for me, it's like the football of the year for me, just slightly um the Tipperary story, I think just shades it. Yeah, well, what about yourself, Connor? No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to stick with I agree with Matty and um, Tipperary was massive, but I suppose following our your own provincial championship, we'll have to go with Kevin winning winning Ulster was, was massive um, written off nearly every year you're looking at Tyrone probably Donegal and Monaghan ahead of them nearly every every year so it was great to see them put in the performances that they did really worked hard worked, worked the final whistle never give in it was sort of nearly destined for them to, to win it the way, the way they started off against Monaghan you know so it was just great to see them win it a bit of a change from them sort of top three if you want to say but I think they fully deserved it the year and uh, it's up to them now to go and build on it you know, just don't leave it as, as a one-off. But so it's up to them to go go and push them sort of big three, if you want to say, get 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 them out of the road and put Cav and Football back up where where they where they want to be. I imagine they don't want to be sitting behind them in three counties all the time. They want to be up at the top table and it's just a great great to see them and the performance they've been was, was massive and just it was a bit of a fresh air, blue fresh air into the, into the championship and we're looking all game forward now to hopefully getting a good off the championship and again this year it'll be great to see Cav and how they get on now after being off the championship. Yeah, without a doubt. And I suppose we've seen in recent weeks, uh, Matty Ronan McCarthy, the Cork manager, has got a 12 week ban. I think it was starting a few days ago when people were saying, geez, he would be sitting and relaxing and he may probably be back by the time um, football's back. Matty, <laughs> make sense of that if you can. Um, look, and I suppose what they were doing at the time was a bit silly. Will he be sitting back and doing that for 12 weeks? I wouldn't imagine so. Um, you know, look at he's still. I would imagine he's still going to be involved some way. The, the lads, I'm sure, no matter in most teams around the country, whether it's hurling football, junior or senior, never mind inter county, will be doing something. Um, obviously not not collectively. Um, I think it'd be it'd be silly in fairness to say that that's happening, but they will be still be doing stuff. And look at obviously he's going to have a hand in in what they're saying. I suppose look at the GA had to come out and make some kind of a stand on it, but you know realistically, what is he going to miss in the next twelve weeks? I think the looks over lockdown for nine of them. So you know. 
it's it's kind of well mm-hmm. giving you a bit of punishment, but you know it's not it's not really a punishment. And look at I, I personally, I don't have a problem with it. It was it, for what they were doing it was quite silly at the time. Um, it just was kind of bad PR and it looked bad, I suppose, on the GA as well. But um, you know, I don't think Ron is going to have too many sleepless nights over for the next few weeks. Yeah, without a doubt. And so was Connor. The government, as kind of said, we're we're in lockdown probably at May and this. It's, it's probably all a bit doom and gloom at the minute. Like, and uh-huh. uh, we probably touched on it before, but like, can you at this stage? When could you see a return to play? If you know, sure. if what's going to happen, or what what's the variable from that? <laughs> oh, geez. I got the t- <laughs> easy question. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it's hard. It's hard to know. I suppose just depends on a whole lot of lot of factors. But the music coming out of Crook Park, they're hopefully trying to get someone run maybe later on in the summer. You'd hope so. And. It's hard to know whether they go club scene first or, or county scene. Will they flip it? I know the plan for county first. Will they flip it and go something like they did last year? It's hard, it's hard to know. Um, a lot of things will, will dictate that, but you just hope they get someone run. That'll be the main concern now, I suppose. Will they get a championship played or will they get a National League played? Will they get a championship? Will they get a club club season runoff? That shows the, the main concern at the minute. I suppose you, if you got anything done, would be would be massive, but we're just fingers crossed and hopefully everything goes to plan and the vaccines will have a lot to, a lot of big role to play in that. So hopefully it will. And as I said, it, it brought great joy to to everybody last year or towards the end of the year, a bad year, and brought great great joy and great great viewing for all of us sitting at home watching. So hopefully we will get some sort of action done at some at some stage. Just at home stage, just hopefully get done some stage. That will be the the main thing. No matter when it is, I think we we know it can be anything can be achieved after what happened last year. You know, we've seen that can be done. I think it can be achievable, so it's just a matter of hopefully getting it done at some stage and done done safely, I suppose, and within all guidelines and all the rest. So hopefully we can it. Yeah, I suppose, Connor, you remarked on it before, um, and I'll ask this question to you, Matty. Like, do the players get enough credit, like, for the display that they've done in twenty twenty and the championship? Like, you know, because at the, it was tough conditions, tough circumstances, and you, you, you know, it was it was just hard. So, like, at the end of the day, did they get enough credit for what they've done, or I suppose the All Stars is probably the best thing they can get, really. Sorry, Matty. John. Is that I'm sorry. Um, oh, Matty, yeah. yeah. To be honest, yeah, I, I think to do because you know looking back at it, every championship match really meant something because we're knockout. Um, and like in most games that certainly that I watched and streamed between ones that were live on telly and ones you streamed, like everyone was having to go ahead. Like you know the the Limerick Tipperary game, you know Tipperary, every they were going for it all the time. And I I certainly think to do because not only were was there a lot, it was there probably more good games this year than probably in a lot of years. But um, I think people appreciate it more, and it certainly shortened the winter for a huge amount of people. You know, the the wet Saturday and Sunday evenings, you know, it's dark at three o'clock, and you're sitting down to to sit into maybe two championship matches was just unbelievable. It didn't matter how bad the weather was, um, or who was playing. I think that there was there was people looking in, and I said, I think they certainly shortened the winter for a huge amount of people. But I I, I think they do get the credit because you said a lot of games were played in bad bad conditions. Um, but like there was there was some brilliant football played. Like you know that. I think it was the Cavan Down game, for instance, springs to mind. Like that was played in, in really bad conditions. It was a super, super game of football. And look, there was plenty more as well. And obviously in Hurling as well, that we'd be taking a, a huge interest down here. And I think it was the case this year. There was probably more people watching GA matches than ever because there was literally nothing else to do. And I think, you know, it as I said, it shortened the winter. Um, you no, know, I think that they do get the credit they deserve. And, you know, we were delighted to see it. And as Connor was saying, you know, hopefully there's some some way that they can get a championship played this year under look at if it's going to happen it looks like it's probably going to be the same it's going to be a straight knockout but <laughs> i think that adds an extra bit of spice to it too because every single game matters and the other likes yeah. of the bigger teams you know you can't have an off day or you know you're going to have you're going to have have shocks and upsets but i think that's that's part and parcel of the championship and i think it's it's a really exciting part of it yeah i suppose if we if we go straight into a championship connor like and if there is no league or whatever like do you think and the championship is so bloody important and players haven't really got much of a chance to train maybe individual training mm. like do you feel that that might be a bit of a strain on some of the counties if we do go straight into a championship um, I think it would be yeah I think it would be it'll probably suit the, the bigger or stronger counties um, when you look at maybe the smaller counties and maybe in the divisions threes and fours maybe you're just giving them doing maybe a lot of the training or individual training or small group training just have one big day out it could be hard to a gel, gel a team, gel and uh, how things is going. Get you know just one big day out. Mightn't be fair in them. I think maybe hopefully they would try and get some sort of. They had plan for a small regional type national league where you're playing sort of your your closer closer neighbours that are restricting travel and all the rest. So hopefully I would think they would get that 
get the, get that in before they would try a championship would be massive for a team's trying to trying to achieve someone. I think it'll be beneficial to teams trying to knock Dublin off their perch as well. You know, if you're giving Dublin a chance, one off chance, it's gonna be very, very hard to beat them. I think teams will need a bit of a bit of a run, a bit of a confidence booster maybe or get things up and going before you try and face Dublin and, and knock them off their perch. So it'll be very hard going into the championship. But again the knock a championship through a lot of things at us, through something different at us, which is great to enjoy. But I think if they could get someone in before championship yeah. this year would be a massive benefit to a, lot, to a lot of teams, you know. Yeah, and if it does happen, Matty, uh, fingers crossed, if there's three teams you could come up with your head, and I know it's all, if all very early days, all very, you don't know, you can't really plan, but if there's three teams that you could come up with that could pose a threat to this uh, Dublin dominance, who would they be? Um, I think Kerry's probably the, the very obvious one. Um, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen in Tyrone uh, with Fergal Logan. Um, like, yeah. I, I don't think there's any doubt. And, you know, I don't think I'm the only one. Like, Tyrone have played have the players, I think, to to be absolutely um, competing with Dublin. Um, but up front and at the back, um, I like to certainly have, have quality up front that, that they've always had. And I think they have it again um, in, in spades. I think, look at it, in my opinion, maybe wasn't getting the best out over the last couple of seasons. Um I said that's only the, the the opinion from the outside looking in, but they have a huge amount of talent, and I think probably Donny Gall is the other one. I think probably Mayo may have slipped back a bit. Just like I know they have really good players, likes uh, good players, young players coming in, the likes of Oshin Mullen, that. But the, the amount of experience they've lost um, with the six lads retiring, I, like you yeah. can't just replace that overnight. Um, you need the, those likes of those guys in tight games to, to drag you over the line, and they did yeah. for numbers of years, barring the All Ireland final. So I don't think you can replace that straight away. So. I suppose if it was to pick the three, it would be Kerry Tyrone and, and Donegal seem to be the best place at the moment. But look at everyone thought it was a it was a, a nailed on Dublin Donegal final this year and or last That's year, right. sorry. And you know, Kevin had Kevin had different ideas. So look, you never know, somebody could come out of the pack, but at the moment they look the three to me this best place, I think, to, to have a crack at Dublin. And what about yourself, Connor? Who who be the three teams that you'd go with? Um I agree there with Mario, yeah, and some of them, yeah, probably Kiara would be the Front runners after being stung badly last year, they've had a long winter to sit back and watch, watch the dub. So I think Kerry will be be mad to get out this year if, if we get going. Definitely, again with their own county, they should be there thereabouts. Uh, hopefully, new management bring a bit of a, a new new spring to their step, and they'd be mad keen to impress that. And if you think of Cahill back, maybe Cahill McShane was a, was a massive loss from last year. I think if we get him back injury free, playing along with with Connor McKenna maybe and, and Dara. Derek Yannaman in there as well would be a massive scoring threat and massive worry for all the teams. So hopefully they get them get them up and going. Um next to Donegal, I'm not too sure on Donegal. Again, haven't been in an Ireland semi final in was five years, something like that, maybe five, four or five years. So um it's hard to know where they where they are. They're always promised so much maybe, but just maybe let let themselves down just that wee, wee bit. Um maybe all county, maybe it's there thereabouts would be thrown in the likes of maybe Galway. What can they do? They've maybe lived in the shadow of, of Mayo this, this long time, so can they really step up the plate and, and pu- push on? Who's like the Damien Comer being injured was was a massive loss from last year as well. Never really got a, a real great great run of. I think he could be a massive massive player if he was injury free and scoring heavy would make a massive difference to that Galway team. Him and him and Shane Walsh are, are a joy to watch as well. So maybe I'll go with Kerry Tyrone and and Donny maybe to or sorry Galway to. To push Dublin if, if they get their house in order, and you know, the good the good manager in place there in Galway, so Park Joyce, like so, Mad Keane, so it'll be and to see how they get on. Yeah, I suppose, last but not least, lads and Matty, it's it's, it's the million dollar question. And I suppose if, if, if you're to come up with some sort of a plan to topple the dubs and either a 10 point plan or whatever it is, what would be? And we've watched them so so many years, not last forever, but if you were managing the team and you're coming up against Dublin at the weekends. What would be some of the things you could try work on, or to try to stop them essentially? <sighs> Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, look at it; it's not something I think that can be that can be done over a season or two. It's probably three or four seasons minimum working this. Um, just the one thing I've just noticed with Dublin over the last couple of years, like they have a huge number of players that can they can just keep consistently doing the simple things really well, and they're all very good. I'm like in in some in certain counties or in a lot of counties, for instance, you'll have. You know, there'll be two or three defenders that probably won't kick the ball, you know, and stuff like that. Dublin's their level of their basic skill is just so much better than everyone else's. Um, and you know, you, we can, you know, we can use the the money argument and stuff like that till the cows come home. But uh, you know, I agree a certain amount with with Dublin people saying, well, you know, when you get out in the field, it's it's irrelevant then. Um, 
I think like counties need to get a, a, a bigger, not a bigger squad. They need to get more players up to the standard of what Dublin are up to. Like there's there's very little difference. If you look at Mayo, Tyrone, and Kerry mm-hmm. over the last three years, in four or five years, in certain games, there's been very very little in it with Dublin, and it's only that that very small bit. Do you know? Home advantage is obviously massive. It's worth three or four points. You know, if 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 Tyrone played every game in in Ulm or you know, Donegal played every game in Bally Buffet or Kerry played every game in Killarney in the championship, it, it, it's going to be a massive help as well. Look at most of the big games, the quarter final, semi finals, finals not going to be moved out of Croke Park. So I think it's just getting more more guys in the panel up to a, a standard that the Dublin players are at. And while that might sound simple, um, I think it, it's anything but. Um, but like other than that, it's it's very hard to, to just say, look, if we do this or do four extra things at the weekend, we're going to be we're going to be there thereabouts with them because they found yeah. ways around around beating everything from blanket defences to all out attack to you know combinations of both. They just seem to have found a way to get around get around everything. Yeah, no, it's it's intriguing stuff because like, I was chatting to Ronan Flanagan. He used to play for Cavan there a couple of weeks ago, and he was kind of saying like a lot of the players are actually of the same standard. Like a lot of Cavan boys nearly would have been the same as Dublin lads, but it's just the S and C and the kind of the quality that's going into that Connor. Like, and you know that's probably making the difference. But what do you feel is just that professionalism that Dublin have brought into it, Connor? The backroom staff and the way they go about their business, essentially. I definitely is. I they brought Evan to a new level. Um, I sort of agree, agree with Marty there as well. Like you know, I think that the strength and depth that they have in Dublin is massive. So it's up to every other county to to try and match it. First, think of all. First of all, I think you know, getting back really down into the grassroots. And I know there's a lot of work done on academy squads and development squads and all the rest in, in every county. But really, getting their use of that, their grants they receive. You know, how are they using that? Are they using that effectively? Are they using that correctly to help the, these t- these younger teams, the younger lads, really to progress on what happens at, at minor level in counties, what's happening on the 21 level, do they quit yeah. or they're not making the grade, so that's going to be an issue that, to make your own county stronger, make your own panel stronger so if you have a stronger panel, you've seen the likes of Dublin you know, the likes of Kevin McManaman coming on out of nowhere and, and impacting and changing games and just winning and learning basically for, for, for the county, so can other counties say that about what they have in their panel, so I think really getting back down into their, their grassroots of, of each county and Making their panel stronger, I will have obviously having better players, definitely. Yeah. But making your panel stronger, that that is able to compete at the at the highest level, is another wee, wee issue that should maybe that try and look at. I know Dublin, the money, as Marty said, is, it can be massive and all the rest. But how it's used in other counties would be, I think, I would like to you would like to see or it can be used better, maybe. Yeah, and even schools in Wexford, Matty, you're on the ground, you can see a lot of it. But is there not being done in schools and say clubs in Wexford, Matty, maybe to enhance? young lads and you know bring them up to that next level no absolutely not um you know anthony masters our, our, our former goalkeeper has, has you know he's he's at the job about two or three years and he's doing unbelievable work but like it's it's not a job for one or two or three fellas like i, I if you i'd say like there's a lot of, of dublin clubs have probably two gpos never mind one and anthony to be fair to him is doing unbelievably good work and it, it's 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 only a kick start but like it needs to be done in every school it needs to be done in every club clearly obviously we're not i, I wouldn't say battling with hurling but like we, we are competing with hurling down here there's there's no doubt about that and at the moment you know hurling is hurling was always the big deal here but at the moment it's really big because they're getting to leinster finals and all semi finals but like our like say for instance i remember watching that cavan county final you, you, you spoke about on telly and like the physical condition of those guys um are in, you know, they all look like inter-county players, the level of strength and conditioning they have. Like, that's not, and we would be nowhere near that in Wexford. Um, if you looked at the, at the county final of Wexford, players do not look like that. And that's not, that's not, um, I said, a, a slur on any of the individual players. We have certain teams and certain clubs who have got strength and conditioning to a decent level. But, yeah. like, it was literally the first couple of years, probably I played with Wexford, which is over 20 years ago at this stage. And to be honest, we haven't come on a whole lot. The county team, marginally, Behind that, not and the first couple of years I played with Wexler was frightening coming up against these lads in the north, and that's that that's genuine. Like you know, I remember I think it was ninety nine or two thousand. Armagh, I think won won in Ulster uh, one of the seasons. I remember seeing McGinney, and I think it was Paul McGrain lifting the cup. Um, I think I said this maybe just a couple of weeks ago. Like they're, like I said, their arms were kind of we were just going fuck. What's going on here? Their arms were like out like legs. You know, but just they were so far ahead of us. And to be honest, it, it even yeah. feels now that they've got further ahead of us in Wexford. Um, you know, <coughs> in fairness, the likes of the Tyrones, the Kerrys, a, a lot of the good Division One teams, they seem to have a really good level of strength and conditioning that goes right back down. 
we don't yeah. and like I, i've been saying this three not three years i've been saying it for a good while that you know having massive having really good strength and conditioning problems is not going to win your games but i mean it gives guys more confidence and you know? all like the first year i played football at wexford it was 11 and a half stone um by 2008, by the, by the All Ireland semi final, kind of was nearly one of the last games I played. I was up to 14 and a half, where I could physically compete with lads, with the likes of Connor and you know guys that are as big as you. And like that's where we're really struggling yeah. as a county, you know, from from very top to bottom. And I think if if you know if we have just seen the likes of Wexford playing Dublin at the moment, I think it'd be like men and boys. Um, and until we get it sorted out, I said I don't think it's going to be the be all and end all, but I think yeah. it has to it has to be the starting point. You just you cannot mm. survive playing inter county football now. You know, at the level of strength and conditioning that that the likes of a Wexford or you know, there's probably plenty of other counties in Division Three and Four um, doing the are at the same. You can just can't survive um, where we're at at the moment. Yeah, and Connor, like I suppose, you have fantastic facilities up in Tyrone, and like it's stage is probably set. He's all the players back, and would you kind of be off the opinion now? Now's the time to deliver, or do you still, do you still feel there's a bit of work to be done in the grassroots levels? I think it's there always is always work to be done at grassroots levels. Definitely is. Um, it's, a, it's going to be an ongoing project to try and get counties up to the level that Dublin have set. Like it's going to be no matter where, what you do or what you win, it's going to be the standard that they have done is it's going to be hard to reach. And Marty said that it's up to those clubs and all the rest to get get players up there. Um, but it's in Tyrone, like the setup's fairly good. A lot of clubs would be. I know a lot of clubs closely here, like Sikil Dress to myself or brand new club room going up there and a brand new high tech gym went in there just a couple of weeks ago which was great for them and they they were a division three team in Toronto there they're getting promoted for this year and the division two but you know they're doing a lot of great work with clubs they got us in Toronto and they're they're producing good good quality players as well so and they're 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 competing at the highest level now too like with with the county squad you know so as I said earlier likes of having them three boys in up up front is going to be a massive boost um, the new management will, will just take a bit of time to settle thing and settle down. And I know they're doing a lot of a lot of online stuff at the minute, doing a lot of Zoom, Zoom meetings and a lot of tactical stuff and uh, things they got. And they're doing their doing their running and all individual GPS runnings and all the rest. So it's, they're they're preparing hard, but th- th- maybe have still a lot, bit of improvement to do as well. You know, maybe a wee bit of inconsistency at, at the highest at the, at the most important time. Maybe has let them down a wee bit. You know, so I think that's important. I think they were shocked maybe against Donegal last year, what Donegal brought to them that day. They maybe t- caught them a wee bit, wee bit cold. So, again, a wee bit like Kerry, they have something to prove now next year. And I know they're working hard, and but hopefully they'll get, get the thing up and running and we'll give it a good lash again. I think Tyrone could can beat anybody maybe on, on their day. They've, they've beaten double in the National League. They've pushed them hard uh, at certain t- t- points in games, so it'll be interesting to see how they get on and I suppose as someone the throne people is looking forward to, especially now with the new management and hopefully everybody in G free and we'll, we'll hopefully we'll give it a good lash over the next sort of couple of years, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, well, that's that's brilliant stuff, boys. Again, thanks a million for joining me on the J Mac podcast this week. That was the All Stars chat and some really good stuff in that. Matty Ford, thanks very much. Connor Gormley, gentlemen, thanks guys, and have a great no Saturday. Bother, boys. Cheers, thank John. you. See you, Connor. Good luck. Bye bye. Bye bye.